Hello everyone, let's get started with the today's video on Kolpali Waste Multimodal Rack. So in this particular video, we are going to cover Kolpali. So we'll be covering each and every stages of Kolpali, right? Uh, we'll be talking about uh, each and every um, part of it. So in each retrieval method, like whether we talk about the standard retrieval method, you have two stages, there is offline, and then there is an online. In Kolpali also we follow the same thing like on offline and then online. So in offline standard, the whole pre-processing, uh, if you see layout detection, like lay, right? And then captioning, then text embedding, everything is happening. And it will be indexed and it will be stored somewhere. In the online, you are querying, right? You have the same, you are doing the similarity score search, then you, you are getting the result and all. In the cold pali also it's similar right you have your data it this data will be will be going through your vision encoder then nlm and then all the index will be created and the same thing is have same as your standard retrieval right and then in the online process similarity will be checked and then nlm will be able to answer the question so before starting with the discussion on different stages of cold pali let's first talk about the different composition of coal pali so the first part inside the coal pali is coal bot maybe you guys have somewhere heard about the coal bot this thing is a backbone for coal pali how it's what is this coal bot so coal bot is something which is called as a token label representation when we talk about coal bot it means it it something maintains the individual embedding for each token instead of creating the embedding for whole chunk, whole sentence, whole topic, it will create the embedding for each token. And then you have the second thing, which is a most important thing in the cold bot, that is late interaction mechanism. And what is that? This late interaction mechanism is nothing. It's a kind of a strategy which, which will take your query and the document and it will pre-process them parallelly right not parallelly but separately until the final stage of retrieval means let me just show you this particular image if you look into this let's say if you fetch your document if you fetch your query so Colbot model will take your document as well as query and it will tokenize each of your um, tokens right and then there would be the vector representation for each token right and this will be somewhere taking the similarity between your each query token to each to token of your document itself and it will do kind of max pooling on top of that and give you the maximum similarity score let me just make it more clear here so if i talk about this one right so if you see, you have the transformer model, you have somewhere query, you have transformer transformer model, you got your somewhere summaries right here. And then here also for the passage itself, you got your summary, uh, sorry, you got your um, vector representation for each token. Now, if you see the similarity between Q and document is nothing, it's a maximum, maximum similarity between your Q1 qi into dj means each q each query query token will be matched with each document token itself and then it will be calculating the result according to that similarity itself if let let me just show you this particular example this is a very good example here so if you see I, I have this passage i have this query when i run this particular query if you see here the color right this this color is, I have searched about the effects of climate change on the marine ecosystems and this is my passage. So whatever the tokens are mentioned here in my query, all the tokens are being matched inside the passage and this is how the heat map kind of things is being created, right? So whatever the direct matches are there, where the similarity is high, it is more darker or wherever the similarity is low, it is more light, like if you see here. This is how the coal butt is being is working, and this is how it is parallelly using late interaction mechanism, mechanism, and it is trying to find out the best way here, right? And component is polygamma. 
so polygamma is basically build up of or you can say it's a composition of two models that is a siglip model siglip so 400 m and gamma 2 billion parameter right so these two models are there so if i talk about working of these two components these two components these two models are what they are doing let's say uh, if in this particular image let's say you have a image of this page right so now this siglip model will be extracting the different uh, patches or in other words bounding boxes from that particular image itself so total of from one page it is creating 1030 patches right and once the patches is built right we got the patches then they are using polygamma or you can say second stage of it which is gamma 2 billion language model to get the contextual meaning of that particular uh, patches itself right so you from the siglip model you got the patches from the gamma model you got the contextual meaning of it right so once you got both the things then your call bird will be there or your embeddings will be there like those pro those will be processed those contextual meaning will be processed processed and stored so here if you look like the gamma model is same same it is doing right if you see this first thing what's happening there is a image right <clears throat> this particular person is lying down somewhere or pro photographer is there and this sigli model what this will this is doing this will create the patches like linear projection these are the patches right and now gamma model it will transform or it will get the contextual meaning of this particular patches right so once it got that whenever you ask any question the same tokenizer will be working here and it will tokenize and then this transformer decoder like whatever the language model you have that will be answering your question based on that particular context itself right so i hope it is clear right first component is your call bot that is a embedding thing which will be using your tokens embedding and second thing is polygamma right so if i talk about uh, as a uh, summary first your all the documents images or your document pages will be considered as a image right let's say page number 1 will be considered as a image 1 and that image will be somewhere uh, divided into the patches like 1030 patches using singlip model once that particular patches will be created gamma model will be able to get the contextual relationship between those patches or contextual relation of that particular patches then your cobalt and embedding model will be there and that will be creating the embedding of your contextual data right and that will be stored somewhere that is an offline process so that's all about the components and now let's jump into the stages of uh, your coal poly walking like offline stages and online stages so first stage we have that is offline indexing okay so offline indexing means this is one time computationally intensive process where you have the document and that document will be pre-processed or encoded or indexed into the retrieval format and it will be stored somewhere so somewhere you got got your index and th that is ready right so now let's think is let's talk about the each and every step of it briefly so the first step if i talk about is all the document pages are pre-processed into 1030 patches or uh, what is happening one page is will be considered as a one image and that image will be having i think 32 cross 32 patches right and each patches will be pre-processed and then it will be flattened and it will be somewhere stored as a 128 dimension of each right so once that is done an intermediate projection layer between siglip like this one if i talk about this one siglip and llm will be there right and that is nothing that image will be having a kind of tokens right these image patches are then passed into the gamma 2 billion decoders to generate the contextual representation about the image tokens right and in addition of the projection layer layer the output of gamma 2 billion 
language model will be embeddings into a lower dimension like a 128 data 128 vector time space right similar approach in the colbert paper to create the lightweight bag of embeddings representation these embeddings are then indexed either locally or somewhere in the vector databases so the main process you i think you understood right the data is there the data will be pre-processed using like this vision encoder that is a siglip model once that is done like patches being created and then once you got all the patches patches is right and that patches is will be going through your gamma 2 billion model and that particular gamma 2 billion model will do the decoding and it will create the contextual representation of that particular image token or image patches itself right and then there is one more if you see this this is a projection layer and this particular projection layer will help you somewhere like uh, vector down or you can say create a lightweight bag embedding which will be having 128 dimension vector space only right and this particular once your projection is like this particular vectors is being created if you see here these will be stored somewhere on the vector locally or somewhere in the uh, database vector databases itself these all the things is being um, um, covered in the offline process then we have the online process and that is very cool let me just explain that how it's happening so let's say you you did query right the querying is an online phase and the inference must be fast and responsive for better user experience so once the query is submitted right so that query will again the same thing as it was happening on the standard reg the query will be encoded using some particular language model on the flygo right so once query is embedded the late interaction mechanism will be again working right like here you know what is late interaction mechanism like it's separately working but parallelly it's working for the query and between your pre-indexed pre document itself it will try to do the kind of tokenized like similarity it will try to check the similarity between your uh, query uh, query tokens and the pre-processed or pre-indexed document tokens right finally Kolpali returns top k similar results as an image which can be then fed into any particular multimodal rag multimodal rag like a Gemini like a Neva like a GPT-40 right and you can do the query with respect so you 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 have the query right now you have the image image what is that image image is nothing it's a page image only that right? the retrieved uh, output from the DB or from the index data itself and that particular image will be fetched base 64 format will be fetched to the um, multimodal uh, LLM and it will give you the result right so let me just give you a very good example with this example is from Royal Bank of Canada this is the annual report and I'll try to explain you like how this online thing is working so let's say I have a query and this query is nothing it's quer this query is describe the elements of a stock market compensation right so this is a query so I have some particular report right report is a PDF format so what is going to happen once I do the query this indexed data whatever the index data I do have on the local this query will be working with that particular <coughs> particular um, index document in late interaction mechanism right so each token will be compared with each token of this particular text and it will try to find out the similarities if you so let's say we have a token called stock so this stock is being compared with each of the patches of this particular image right so if you see this is a heat map right so wherever the similarity is high the the color will be more towards this lighter right so stock if you see stock wherever you feel like there is light color like this kind of color is there that means the similarity is high in here also if you see the compensation and wherever you see, you see the compensation relative or similar words it the uh, similarity will be high right this is how it will try to this kind of max pooling right max pooling we have heard of somewhere in the deep learning section right this is a max pooling thing let me just give you the output this is how it will give you the output this is a page image right if you see we have we have searched off describe the element of a stock based compensation right and we got the result like this share based compensation share based compensation shareholders 
so wherever we have the similar chunks similar patches similar tokens it is retrieving those particular pages to us so i told you in the beginning itself you will be getting the top k results so top k results mean top k pages so I, if i put that um, uh, value as hyperparameter value as a one i'll be getting one page two page like this right so this will be giving me the score as well as the base 64 format of this particular image and the page number and the document name as well right so this is whole about the cool poly method which is being used utilized for the multimodal rack where you have the different kind of architecture and we this particular method can help you to preserve the um, uh, format and also it will be able to help you to find out the correct meaningful context from the uh, document itself right so that's all about Kohl Pali in this particular video. I mostly tried to explain the theory part in this particular video. And the next video we'll talk about uh, coding part as well as we'll try to make a kind of a streamlit app where you will be able to upload some uh, document and you will be able to get the particular uh, results while doing the query itself. So thank you so much for watching this particular video. Please like this video if it is helpful for you. Thank you.